It's been called the free meal that feeds your soul. We're talking about the Dallas Dinner Table, a place where people come as they are to have safe conversations about race. The pandemic will force those conversations to once again be virtual, but what's most important is that they continue. I visited with the nonprofit's new executive director as reservation slots now open. I really learned more about it once I was in the interview process. So many people, my mentors, people around me had participated, my friends, even colleagues at work. Once I brought it up to them, they said, oh yeah, I've participated. I had not, but so many people around me had all of these wonderful stories to tell me about their experience with Dallas Dinner Table. What excites you most about this series of dinner tables events that are coming up this year? What I'm excited about is, of course, what we're all doing. It's just pivoting. You know, Dallas Center Table has provided for many years an opportunity for you to go to someone's home, share a meal, and participate in a facilitated conversation. Now we've been able to pivot to the virtual world, and you can have this conversation from your home. And so we've been able to spread across the nation. People in different states can and have participated. So that's what I'm excited about. I don't have to limit my invitations. They can go across the nation. On the one hand, I know I have a long history uh, and being a big supporter and fan of Dallas Dinner Table. So when I heard last year that they were going to need to pivot and go virtual, I thought, oh, you know, one of the things that's so wonderful about it is bringing people together. But as you just said, you know, when you go past that initial disappointment, it's like, hey, it opens it up to so many more people. And I think there's the potential for there to be a greater comfort zone that you're yes. in your own home uh, reaching these uncomfortable topics. Why is that still so important to give people a safe place to talk about this and to talk about race? You know, I think what's currently happening, our news tells us every single day that we still need to have these conversations. So much of our lives are still, um, we have so much of our life around people that look like us and we still need intentional times to come together to meet and talk with people who don't look like us and have a different life experience. And that's valuable because we see all the time how much we really have in common. What do you say to someone out there who perhaps is new to North Texas or is just today hearing about Dallas Dinner Table and they're intrigued, they're interested, but they're afraid. They're afraid that if I come to this this event, I'm going to be attacked or blamed. There's a little bit of hesitancy there. What do you, what would you say to those folks? That there's no need to be afraid. <laughs> there's no need for fear. The facilitators who are um, handling the conversation, they are treating you like a guest, just like you would be a guest in their home. So they are happy to see you, glad that you've decided to engage. And the conversation is not a debate. It is a time to share, to listen, and to be exposed to something you haven't heard before. Because as we walk across up, up and down the street or where we're going to stores, we don't get to hear the stories of all these individuals walking around. And this is a time for you to share space with eight to 10 people that you don't know and just get to hear and listen to their stories. And you get to share your own experiences. So there's no need for fear. <laughs> there, we won't be debating. We can't debate experiences anyway. And so it's, it's a time where I think people will really be surprised at how enlightened and um, how even more self-aware they are, you know, just in learning about yourself and having that conversation. You know, Dion, we say so often that so many of us, we want a, a safer, kinder world where there's more understanding, but sometimes we fall short, short in getting specific about how to make that happen. And one of the things I love about Dallas Dinner Table is that it's specific in its goals. We have these lofty ideals, but Dallas Dinner Table helps you get there. Yes, absolutely. It is a wonderful starting place for that conversation that can be a bit uncomfortable initially, but I can guarantee you, you will be so happy that you joined in and stretched yourself, you know, as we're all learning new things. Okay, it's a couple of week, weeks out, and just like any sought after ticket in North Texas, you need to make those reservations early. Where are you right now on your planning and what are you asking our viewers to do? 
I'm asking for viewers to go to our website, dallasdinnertable.com, register to participate. We are about halfway through all of our registration, so there's still some spaces left, but they are filling. And also, sponsorships are available too. If corporations are interested in supporting, it's a wonderful event to be behind. And yeah, those are the ways to engage right now. How excited are you about this upcoming series of events and the growth that will happen in North Texas because of it? I'm so excited. The last couple of weeks have been um, just filling, you know, every single moment something else is coming in. I'm seeing registration numbers, you know, move and it's just exciting to hit the goal. It's like, yes, we set out to do this and we're getting there and I'm, I'm thrilled. I really am. And not even the pandemic's going to stop it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Dion Kirby, new executive director with Dallas Dinner Table. I thank you so much for your time this morning and good luck. I hope every single slot fills up. Thank you so much. And we'll be right back. <laughs>